Nine on Your Side has team coverage of Irma's wrath tonight. We begin with ABC's Marcy Gonzalez live from Tampa. Yes, a major sigh of relief for so many people that this storm didn't cause the catastrophic damage that was expected in places like this. However, Irma is still leaving its mark. Today, flooding in Charleston, Savannah, and breaking records in Jacksonville. What was Hurricane Irma now moving north? While Floridians statewide start to assess the destruction left by this giant storm. We got a lot of damage, a lot of cleanup. Neighborhoods like this one in Naples underwater. Mobile homes, airplanes, even the front of this senior living center torn apart. It's unbelievable. Trees uprooted, this one in Bradenton taking part of a house with it. It's just an incredible sight. The first images from the Keys, where Irma made its initial U.S. landfall as a Category 4 yesterday morning, now coming in, showing houses barely standing, cars buried beneath sand. With bridges closed, residents who evacuated are now trying unsuccessfully to get back. Very anxious, and we're all just, we all just want to go home and see what's going on. Irma's second Florida landfall on Marco Island. Look at, the, look at this, total wide out now. Leaving damage and gratitude. We were getting predictions that we we're going to have 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, and we're grateful that we were spared. A sentiment shared by so many in the Sunshine State. It was not as bad as I thought it was really going to be. Even while Florida's largest power company, FPL, says as many as 9 million people at one point today still had no electricity. No power, no internet. I mean, this is, we're living like savages. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're trying to have a sense of humor as crews as from far away as California are here working to get the lights back on for everyone. But people are being warned that it could take weeks. Live in Tampa, Florida, Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News. Now back.